Let's move on to solving absolute value inequalities. Okay, solving absolute value inequalities. So let's take a look at this guy. Feel free to jot it down if you want. Um, the notes, the notes to solving absolute value inequalities are the same as solving absolute value equations. The only difference is what I added on in blue right here. Okay. This is on the sideboard of our class. So you're going to start by isolating the absolute value on one side. And it'd be a good idea to get it on your left side. That's step one. Step two is to set up your positive situation and your negative situation. The positive situation, you write it exactly the way it is without the absolute value symbol. The negative situation, same thing, but change all the signs to the right side. And if you look over here, the blue, this is the new added notes to inequalities, absolute value inequalities, and switch the inequality symbol. So on the negative situation, you switch the inequality symbol and you change the sign of everything on the right side. Cool? All right, so now that we have gone over those notes, uh, we're going to go back to them in a little while. Let's first isolate it, and I'm going to isolate it by doing what? Adding 7, yeah, doing the opposite of minus 7 is plus 7. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if I did have like a, a 5 out here that I was multiplying by, I would have to divide by 5, but I'm not doing that, so we're not dividing. What are we really doing? We're just adding 7 to get rid of that minus 7. So plus 7 on both sides, my new absolute value inequality will be the absolute value of 2x plus 2, close absolute value, is less than or equal to 2. Now, mind you, if I would have divided by a negative, then it would have flipped the inequality symbol, but I didn't divide by a negative. Anyway, we, we've isolated it. That is step one. Step two is to do a positive situation and a negative situation. There it is. And the positive situation is writing it exactly the way it is, but without these guys. We're going to erase these guys. And the negative situation is writing it exactly the way this is, but we're going to change the inequality and we're going to change the sign of anything on the right side. So we're going to change this and make this a negative 2 for the negative situation. Okay, so now step 3 is to solve. Okay, so let's solve one at a time. I want to solve the positive situation by subtracting 2, cancel, subtract 2. Hey, 2 take away 2 is nothing. So, 2x is less than or equal to nothing, to 0. 0 is a number, so let's keep working. We're going to divide by 2, divide by 2. x is less than or equal to nothing, 0. That is an answer, okay? Now, I don't want to write this on my answer column yet because, well, let me first answer the, uh, let me do the negative situation and then we'll, we'll talk and explain some more. The negative situation, we're still going to subtract 2 to both sides, but over here it doesn't cancel. It ends up giving you a negative 4. So we have a negative 4 on the right side, sorry about that, greater than or equal to symbol, and then a 2x right here. And we still need to get rid of the 2 in front of the x. I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2. So x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Notice that I did not flip the inequality symbol because I did not divide by a negative. Anyhow, we have two answers. And ladies and gentlemen, our notes, if we go back to the notes over here, We have solved both equations, um, but remember the blue ink right here is the extra notes that we have for inequalities. So you solve both equations and graph on a number line. Okay, so not only do we solve, but we also need to graph on a number line. If the areas are together, you must write the compound inequality together. If your areas are apart, you have to keep the inequalities apart with the word or. Okay, so we need to see this demonstrated. I need to graph both of these. That's what I need to do. So I'm going to go to a number line. I'm just going to do a quick sketch. Let's say here's 0. 
Now that's a bad idea. Uh, where would zero be at? In the middle or a little bit further to the right because we have a negative number that we want. So we want the uh, negative two over here. So the question is, when I think about x being less than or equal to zero, which way is it going from zero? To the left or to the right? To the left. So this is a solid dot. It's going to the left. Now if we look at the other one, the other one says x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So greater than is to the right. And it's a greater than or equal to. So I'm going to put a solid dot right here and then go to the right. So the bottom line is this area is together. It's from here to here. It's an area that's together. So I need to write both of these guys, I need to write them together. I can't leave, if I put them like this on the answer sheet, I can't get full credit even though those are the right answers. You need to write them together because the areas are together. Now, I know that this seems like, oh, it's going to be difficult. No, it's really easy to write them together, especially because you already wrote them in order on a number line. The smaller values on the left, the bigger numbers on the right. That's why, it, I mean, it's on a number line. It's already organized. So all you got to do is put the X right in the middle. The smaller numbers already on the left. The bigger numbers already on the right. And if it's already in order, then it has to open up to the right. It has to open up to the right. The only thing you need to remember is that these are solid dots, so put those solid lines underneath it. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the final 100% correct answer to that compound inequality. So let's jump to this other one. Now this one already has an isolated absolute value, so let me just go positive and negative situation. And the positive situation is writing it exactly the way it is without the absolute values. Negative situation is the same exact thing, but just change this and change the sign on the right side. So let's focus in on the positive situation and solve it. So we're going to subtract 5, subtract 5, and we will get 3v is greater than... Uh, what is that? 9? Then we're going to divide by 3 and divide by 3 and we get V is greater than 3 because 9 divided by 3 is 3. Now this is one answer so far. Let me go for the other. We're going to subtract 5. Subtract 5. We're going to get 3V is less than negative 19 and then we're going to divide by 3 and divide by 3, V is less than, and people are like, oh my god, it's a fraction, I don't know what to do. It's okay, you can get fractions, right? Fractions exist. So what is 19 divided by 3? It'll go in 6 times, so it'll be a negative 6, and you'll have a remainder of 1 over the original 3. Okay, so here's another possible answer. If you leave it as negative 19 thirds, that's also an acceptable answer. But the reason why I put it as a mixed number is because I need to decide whether these answers are going to be written together as a compound inequality or is it going to have the word or right between it. Now, I don't know. We need to figure that out by looking at a number line. So let's look at a quick number line. So we want to write the 3 on there. You want to write the uh, value negative 6 and 1 third. Or you could also go back and write the original negative 19 thirds, whatever you prefer. I'll go with 19 thirds. And we need to think about what this means. V is greater than 3. So here's 3. Greater than is to the right. And here's the other value, negative 19 thirds or negative 6 and a third. And when we think about V being less than negative 6 and a third, that's going to the left, less than to the left. And because we have areas that are apart, we need to write our answer with the word or right between it. We don't have to write a compound inequality where we put it all together as one. We just leave them apart. V is uh, greater than 3 or V is less than negative 6 and a third or negative 19 thirds. Whatever you prefer is okay with me. That would be your final answer. What do you guys think?